And then, when the fungus is actually ready to take the next step in its life cycle, something weird happens to the ant. The ant starts to crawl up uh, a plant. And it's very specific about what it does. It'll, 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 grow, it'll climb up plants with leaves that grow about that high. And it will clamp <coughs> onto a little vein on the underside of the leaf, usually facing north or northwest. And we'll stay there, <coughs> clamped on. And meanwhile, the fungus starts to develop into its next uh, next stage. And part of what that involves is, is that the uh, threads start to emerge on the on the surface of the ant's body. They start to glue the the ant to the leaf. Uh, and meanwhile, it's it's uh, actually starting to produce antibiotics to keep bacteria from feeding on the host because they want it for themselves. And actually, we get some of our antibiotics from this parasite. There are some antibiotics that are regularly prescribed that are produced by cordyceps. Um, in any case, the, the final and most spectacular part of cordyceps development is that stalks start to grow up and out of the ant's body. Or I should say down. Because like I said, this picture is really upside down because the, the ant is, is under there. The reason the ant is there, is be, it, it appears, is that because the conditions, the humidity, the temperature, and so on, are perfect for the fungus to, to grow. And once it reaches this stage, then those, there are spores <coughs> on, on, on the surface, and they can shower down on other ants as well. This is, this is a fungus, and they can do all this. It's not even an animal. This would have made Lancaster go nuts, you know. That, that, that a mere fungus could manipulate an animal this way. But, you know, the fact is that um, this basic strategy uh, has evolved a number of times. So, for example, there is a, um, there's a fluke, which is a kind of like a flat one. Uh, and the fluke has kind of a different set of challenges it faces. So, when I told you about the cordyceps before, it goes from, um, from an ant back to another ant. The lancet fluke goes from, it needs to get from an ant into a cow, and then into a snail, and then into an ant, and then a cow, and then a snail. That's the only way this can survive, is to get into three very different hosts. But it can do it. And what it does is it just takes advantage of the interaction between <coughs> these different animals. So when it, uh, so it's in snails, Snails pick up the eggs on the ground, they eat them, and then they actually, they find it very irritating and disgusting. So they kind of, inside their bodies, they cover them with slime, and then cough them out, and they're on the ground, and ants come along, and they love slime. They eat these little slime balls, and they infect themselves with the lancet fluke. <coughs> and some of these lancet flukes, uh, larvae inside their body, go up into their, their brains and start manipulating them, and guess what happens? Uh, when the parasites are ready, the, the ants will go up and climb up to the top of grass and other plants. They do it at twilight. Uh, and that happens to be a time when a lot of animals graze. Uh, so a cow will be coming along and will eat, eat the tip of a blade of grass and eat the parasite with it, eat the ant with it, the parasite with it. The parasite develops into the big into the worm. It's not that. It's about that big. It's not too big. Inside there, the, uh, the cow, and there they can mate and produce eggs, and the eggs pass out with the cow's droppings. Boom, land on the ground, and the snails pick them up again. Um, so, so, so the fluke, this animal, has evolved the same strategy of getting ants to go up uh, in order to prolong the, the life cycle. What's neat about these guys is that, as I said, they only come up at twilight when, the time, when it's time to graze. And they stay up there through the night, and then at dawn, the ants you know, are, are basically commanded by the puppet masters to let go, crawl back down to the ground, and just go about being regular ants again until twilight. And they go back up again, and they wait to be eaten, back down, up and down, until finally the parasite is able to get to the new host. Um, 
I think that Ailey in the movie, my hunch is, although I haven't really gotten categorical proof of it, you know, was based on parasitic wasps. Again, we've got lots of parasitic wasps around here. This is not terribly exotic stuff I'm telling you about. If you go into a garden and you see a caterpillar with these funny white things sticking on, off of it, those are parasitic wasps. What happens is that the wasps, like the alien, they, uh, they inject uh, eggs into a host, uh, and uh, in some cases, the, the wasps actually use a stinger to inject the eggs in. In other cases, they just lay the egg next to the host, and it falls in. But in any case, they grow inside the caterpillar, and then uh, once they're ready to uh, develop further, they crawl out and the host dies. <coughs> There are hundreds of thousands of species of parasitic wasps out there, and you know, we only know what a fraction of them do, uh, but it's amazingly sophisticated stuff. Uh, I'll just give you one example. Um, so some wasps attack spiders. And normally the spiders produce uh, webs like this, which are great for catching flies. But when it's time for the, wa for the wasp parasite to emerge from, from the spider, the spider tears down its web and uh, it builds this. In other words, it uses spider silk to create a sort of a cross piece, very strong, stout cables, as it were. And then the, uh, the, the wasp climbs out of the spider. The spider finally dies now. And then the wasp uh, larva is able to is able to crawl down to the crawl to the center of that structure, and then uh, weave itself a little uh, pupa, where it's going to uh, develop into an adult. So why would it why would it go there? Why would it why would it sort of force its host to to, to, to build such a weird structure so they could be suspended down there? Well, uh, parasitic wasps have parasites of their own. So that if that wasp is not careful, another wasp is going to come and lay its eggs inside of it. Uh, so there are parasites inside of parasites. Actually, there are parasites inside of parasites inside of parasites inside of parasites. Inside of parasites. I mean, people have, I think, have gone four degrees. Maybe, maybe they find one with those five. I don't know. I've lost count. 